is I'm a lead. I know I and I'm a male to female transgender woman. Um, today's going to be a pretty special day. I'm actually going to meet some former high school friends. We're actually going into the city. I'm going to commute by train most likely. And uh, we're going to have dinner. It's going to be approximately 12 people. And I went to high school with them. So we were all pretty close friends back in high school. We, um, I graduated with some of them in 1979. <coughs> there are a few that are a little older than us. So I'm looking forward to it. They'll probably see me for the first time, most of them, as a transgender woman, because they really only knew me uh, in, as a male. So they only knew me as Edward. But now I'm, I go by Emily. So it'll be quite interesting to see how they receive me. Uh, they know me and they know I'm transitioning because I'm friends with them on Facebook. So we're, we're, we're in touch with each other. So they certainly know that I am transitioning and that I am living full time as a transgender woman. So. I don't think it'll be a problem. I will say that uh, I'm a little bit excited and a little bit nervous, but I believe that it will work out nicely and I'm sure they'll accept me and it'll be interesting. I'm gonna wear a nice dress and uh, I will uh, just be myself basically. You know, I'm finally living my life the way I should, and uh, I feel happier. When I started transitioning, I was debating, you know, what the repercussions would be, if it was worth the, the time and the effort. I was scared. Uh, so many factors that have to be considered before you undertake such a monumental uh, task. You know, I don't envy uh, transgender individuals. Certainly it's not easy. I know because I'm one of those. I'm a trans, transgender girl. And uh, it's been very difficult at times. But uh, I must say that I am much happier now. And uh, I respect people who uh, try to find their joys and happiness in life. And uh, basically, I just want to find my own happiness. And I think uh, transitioning is the right thing for me. In my heart, I knew I was a girl since grade school. And, uh, I cross-dressed all my life, and I just felt like a girl from the very beginning. And I was depressed, cried, uh, felt very lost, alone, sad. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't want to live if I had to continue as a boy. These are the feelings that most typical transgender individuals go through. I always knew in my heart I was supposed to be a girl, and it was quite difficult for me to live my life that way, pretending always and being in pain and not knowing how to uh, talk about it with people. I was extremely shy, uh, painfully shy. Uh, I had no one to really reach out.
reach out to. Uh, I certainly couldn't tell my family. So I had to carry this huge burden with me. And it wasn't until my adulthood, uh, middle adulthood I should say, when I finally start, started to seek therapy. I was in my early 30s, and this was a few years after my mom passed away. But uh, I needed to see someone to talk about my feelings and to discuss my transgender struggle. And uh, I also tried to learn about what it is and how to deal with it and I went to a support group meeting for the very first time and it was in Connecticut and then I went to a gender identity clinic uh, down in Virginia and uh, I was seeing the therapist on an ongoing basis uh, so I I was thinking that I am making some inroads. Uh, I wasn't sure which direction I was going in. Uh, I was certainly quite immature for my age, and I wasn't quite ready to embark on a transition, even at the age of 33. And I wasn't in a relationship either. And I still was living at home with my dad. He needed company anyway, since mom had been gone several years already. But uh, we were, we had a good relationship, my dad and I, but my dad didn't really open up and talk. He was a very quiet, reserved man, and he put all his time and energies into his work. But he was a wonderful husband and father. And I have many fond memories of my dad and my mom. Um, sometimes I wish that I was able to tell them, but they both struggled with their own battles, so I didn't want to drop this on them. So I kind of just kept it quiet and tried to deal with it the best way I could and uh, after going to my therapist for uh, several years she tried to help me meet someone and she actually introduced me to the girl that I obviously would marry because I wasn't ever in any other relationship. She was, she's Filipino, and we hit it off, and, you know, we uh, married after dating for, for approximately a year, and then after marriage, we had our child, our son, Maddie, who is now 16, and he has some struggles, he's autistic, but we love him, he's a beautiful boy, he's my pride and joy, and Maddie accepts me for who I am, he's a very good kid, and we have a wonderful relationship, and I just am thrilled to have a son, and I love him so much, he's the best thing in my life, to be honest with you. And I, I don't know where I would be without him. I just feel so overjoyed when I think about him. And I, I miss him deeply since he's gone. He's at a residential school because of his autistic uh, struggles. And uh, he seems to be doing okay. He's making progress. And he's making friends, which is important. So I hope that everything will go well for him and uh, eventually he'll hopefully transition back to the school district here in Levittown. Um, you know, we're all for his growth and uh, want him to succeed, obviously, and we'll do anything to get him in the right uh, direction.
Dankeschön. Uh, I'm not working. I'm on medical disability. I uh, had trouble uh, since I came out as a transgender woman. Uh, it was difficult for my employer to keep me. And uh, I just felt uh, depressed after losing my job and uh, started to experience financial problems. But, uh, you know, we are slowly moving in the right direction, you know, and things happen in life that we have no control over. So I'm trying to stay optimistic. I'm very pleased with the way my transition is going. Uh, I really would like to have surgery and trying to get the approval letters through my psychiatrist and therapist, but right now that's an issue. Um, and I'm just uh, noticing how feminine I am and how happy I am to be transitioning. And uh, I love to be truthful to myself. I wasn't in the past. I lived in the closet. So I carried this huge weight on my shoulders and it wasn't healthy and it made me very depressed because I knew I was truly a woman trapped in a man's body and it was horrendous. Uh, I can't explain it to you uh, for you to understand because you're not transgender. I know because I am transgender and I'm male to female transgender. But uh, I know in my heart that I'm doing the right thing. You know, I was very, I felt very guilty with raising a son and having him see his dad transition from a father to a woman. Uh, I tell him always though that I will still be his father despite the fact that I'm transitioning to become a woman. And I will always be there for him. And uh, I even told him that he should still dress me as his father. You know, and I don't care what people say if they see my son calling me dad and I'm wearing a dress. It doesn't bother me. You know, I just don't want Maddie to be affected by it. So, uh, instances he may feel more comfortable just calling me Emily and I told him he could do that I think the hardest part in deciding if you're going to transition or not is the uh, the consequences that you may face Certainly there are many factors that have to be considered. If you're married, you certainly want to continue to be ma stay married. If you're working in a job and you're depending on that as your income, you certainly need to uh, have that employment still as your source of income. If you're... Um, making monthly mortgage payments and those payments are tied into your job you need to make sure that that's not in jeopardy uh, if you have children you need to make sure that your relationships are strong you know there are so many factors and it's very difficult that's why a lot of people who are transgender don't transition because it's just too risky for them and they just don't feel comfortable taking those chances. And I must admit that when I was going through the soul searching phase before I decided to transition, I was very uh, confused. I didn't know what direction I was going to go in. Uh, I 
was scared and I was uncertain and uh, I felt very depressed because I knew in my heart what I truly wanted to do but I was trying to make excuses and find ways of not doing it and that only made me feel worse because I knew deep down that I needed to do it and I think that's the hardest thing for most transgender people is that they have to make those tough decisions and they're very emotional decisions and only a transgender person will know where I'm coming from and uh, I think when you grow up and you always felt different and that your mindset of how you perceived yourself was not representative of your body, uh, it really takes a lot of healing and you need to know that people care you and hopefully will support you if you decide to uh, go forward and transition. Uh, I knew that when I decided I was going to transition, I needed to tell my wife and my son and I was very nervous how I should approach that. And then obviously I had to tell my employer and I had to tell my family, my sisters, and some close friends. And then the rest, I just made it known on my Facebook page. But uh, when I did come out, I felt much happier. I was more liberated. And I knew that uh, I was going to stick to the plan and do everything I needed to have a successful transition. Uh, it's not an easy thing to transition from male to female. And you really have to start intelligently and need to find the, the proper help and support that you need so you have a chance at a successful transition. Plus, you also have to be up for that in a psychological way. Uh, you have to have the uh, proper uh, mindset once you embark on your transition. Uh, I've struggled with depression and uh, I've recently been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and obviously uh, I have gender dysphoria or gender identity disorder which is uh, where your perception of who you are is different from your physical sexual uh, body characteristics so I, I was born a uh, male I'm a genetic male, but I identify as a female, so I'm transitioning from male to female, so I can match my mind to my body, and I'm doing it through the use of hormones. I take a form of estrogen called estradiol, and my primary care physician has prescribed me two milligrams three times a day. She's uh, a doctor, medical doctor at Callum Wood in Manhattan. And then I take uh, an anti-androgen or anti-testosterone pill, which is called spironolactone. And I take 100 milligrams of that twice a day. And that helps me in my change from a physical point of view, it alters my body chemistry 
to make it more feminized, and that makes me very happy. Uh, I also have to make sure that I take the hormones regularly, and I fill my prescriptions on a consistent basis, and that I'm always in touch with my doctor. Uh, I also uh, am doing, still doing electrolysis, which is the permanent hair removal, and the area of main focus is my face. And I must say that my skin is the softest that it's ever been, and it just feels great when I can run my hands around my skin and feel the softness of it, and the combination of uh, the usage of the hormones and the electrolysis really makes my skin extremely feminine and soft, which is where I always wanted. And uh, I also go to doctors and therapists, and I uh, speak about my feelings, and they monitor me for my depression, and uh, I talk about my gender struggles. I also go to uh, take care of my hair. I go to a salon, and they, they do a great job. They make me look really good, and they, they've done nice things with my hair. They colored it. They highlighted it. You know, and my, my hair is starting to grow. This is actually the longest that I've ever had it, so I'm quite happy. Obviously, I, I would love to have it come down here and, and continue to grow. That would be awesome. And uh, what else? Um, I, uh, I go to support group meetings. I've met nice people, all different ages. In fact, uh, I'm trying to help out a two kids, one is a male to female transgender girl, she's only 17, and the other is a female to male transgender boy, and he's 19, and they're actually dating each other, but they are homeless, uh, I don't know the details, but uh, I know that two of the transgender girls who are a couple had them staying with them in their apartment, but for whatever reasons, the landlord was adamant that uh, they had to leave, otherwise they themselves would have been evicted. So, sadly, they had no place to stay, and uh, I'm, I wasn't sure what to do. I was quite uh, emotional when I went to that meeting that night in the support group, knowing that they had no place. And my son is away at school, so we have his bedroom available. So I figured, you know, I can accommodate them for a little while. And hopefully they'll be able to do what they need to do to get settled and hopefully find a place. And uh, obviously they need to focus on their education and getting on their feet. It's not easy. Uh, <coughs> I wish I had the answers. I don't. But uh, I can only do what I can do. Certainly I have my own other worries. Uh, you know, I have the mortgage situation. Uh, at least uh, with the help of my wife and my son's account for the social security monies he receives on my account, uh, we were able to catch up mainly 
uh, based on my wife taking out money from his account. Uh, now, instead of being four months behind, I'm only one month behind, and uh, I'm going to try to make the dent. Well, it's going to be hard now because my car was in the accident. I wasn't even there. I was in the therapist's office, and it seems somebody hit the bumper and screwed it up big time. And uh, I can't drive with it the way it is. I mean, I can drive it, but I'm afraid that it, it it's not going to hold out much longer. So, but uh, <clears throat> one thing I notice about when you decide to transition. I used to be very shy and awkward, and I didn't talk a lot, I didn't talk to people, I hated, I couldn't even do this, talking into a camera, I didn't know what to say, but I'll tell you, since I started my transition, I've become like a little chatterbox, I love to talk, I love to express myself. Uh, since going on the hormones, I feel pleasant changes, like, I feel more sensitive, much more emotional. I, I, was, I was always emotional, but uh, I feel like uh, I'm extremely emotional and uh, compassionate, and I enjoy uh, living at female fashion feeling pretty, and uh, I love uh, clothes, uh, you know, and I, I love to go out with my son, and he knows my situation, and he's very accepting, so I dress as a female when I go out with him, and, you know, nobody bats an eyelash anymore, I used to be scared when I used to go out, when I was cross-dressing. But those days are over. Now I'm just dressed the way I should be in women's clothes. And it's natural for me. And, you know, I enjoy taking pictures and posting them. You know, I take nice pictures. Uh, I don't do anything that you shouldn't do. Um, I'm not used to the attention that I'm getting. It seems that... Uh, guys look at me as some object or they think I'm attractive and they message me, they want to be friends with me, they compliment me. I never had that when I was a guy. I never had girls drooling over me and complimenting me and telling me how beautiful a person I was. But once I put on a dress, and grew my hair out and colored my hair and started doing the hormones. It's like uh, guys are all over trying to entice me or attract me. And it just feels very weird. Uh, I, I'm not used to it. And uh, just the thought of uh, having a boyfriend is weird. 